Hello Internet! This video is the first in a series of videos about how to understand quantum mechanics. By understanding quantum mechanics, I mean thinking about it in a way that is physically correct, complete and logically and philosophically satisfying. Even though quantum mechanics has been known for almost a century, there is a lot of confusion about it. Most of this confusion is not due to anything complicated about quantum mechanics, but it is due to misunderstandings of basic but fundamental facts. Let us therefore get the basics right. Before we continue, please subscribe and comment to support the channel. It really helps a lot. Quantum mechanics is a physical theory. And in this first episode, we will discuss what a physical theory is. Believe it or not, many people are deeply confused about quantum mechanics because they miss this crucial point. In general, a physical theory is a set of rules that tells us how to make true quantitative statements about the world. More concretely, based on quantitative knowledge from past physical observations, a physical theory allows us to predict the results we expect from future observations. Our main task will be to understand how these predictions are made and what they do or do not imply. Throughout this video series, we will repeatedly use divisions of the whiteboard to clearly lay out important concepts. I will now briefly explain these divisions. The tools used to make physical predictions are mathematical. A physical theory, therefore, must tell us how to connect our observations of the physical world to specific mathematical objects like numbers, equations and the solutions of these equations. We will represent the physical world by the upper half of the whiteboard. On the lower half, we will place mathematical objects. Connections between the physical and the mathematical necessarily go in both directions. The theory tells us how to represent our physical knowledge mathematically. And it tells us how to interpret mathematical solutions physically. It is crucial to understand that there is no inherent physical meaning in mathematical objects. Whatever physical meaning there is, must be explicitly postulated by the theory. We will further need to distinguish between known and unknown quantities, both with regard to the physical observables and to the mathematical model. Known quantities will be placed on the left half of the whiteboard. Unknown quantities will be placed on the right half. These halves are also connected in two directions. Known quantities are the basis for predicting unknown quantities and unknown quantities become known quantities when we observe them. The black region in the upper right is there to remind us that we never experience unknown physical quantities. The only way to experience physical quantities is through observation which makes them known quantities. That is crucial to contemplate. We may have many ideas about the unknown, unobserved aspects of the world, but we do not have any direct experience of them. We therefore should be highly aware and highly skeptical of those ideas. And indeed, some common ideas about unobserved quantities turn out to be wrong. In contrast, we do have a lot of reliable experience from observing the world. And it is these observations into which we can and must lay our trust. The observations are what we mean when we say the real world. And the real world is not dependent on the theories we have about it. Note a fundamental difference between the physical and the mathematical parts of a physical theory. The terms we need to speak about the physical world cannot be defined with mathematical precision. 
Instead, we need to base these terms on our experience of the physical world as we observe it. We need to use terms like knowledge, observation, measurement result, uncertainty and so on and accept them as axioms that are sufficiently grounded in our experience. Like the physical world itself, the meaning of these terms does not depend on our particular theory. How do we know whether our physical language makes sense? We cannot apply the same standards of rigor and complete definition which we use in the mathematical part. Instead, our measure for the reliability of our physical concepts must be the consistency of our observations. It is this consistency of our experience that we call reality. We consider something real if we can observe it repeatedly and in multiple ways, getting the same consistent result. Now that we have set the stage in general, I will let my slightly younger self explain the details. Physics is about the interpretation and prediction of quantitative observations. All of our physical knowledge is ultimately based on observations that can be interpreted as measuring numerical quantities. The knowledge we gain from these observations is therefore represented mathematically by numbers. We can plug these numbers as initial conditions into some equations of motion, which encode how the physical quantities will change with time. Once we have solved the equations of motion, we can interpret the solution in order to make predictions about future observations of unknown physical quantities. This circle is finally completed by actually making the observations, updating our knowledge with the new results and comparing the results to our previously made predictions. I want to emphasize that the physical theory is not only the mathematical equations we find in this box. A physical theory covers this whole cycle. It postulates which quantities are there to observe and the limits of observations, if any, how to represent the knowledge gained about the physical situation mathematically, how to represent unknown physical quantities and the equations of motion obeyed by these quantities, how to interpret a solution in order to make predictions about unknown quantities, and finally, how to check these predictions and how to update our knowledge about the physical situation with the new results. All of this combined is called a physical theory. Let's make this more concrete by looking at a simple example. We observe a particle by measuring its position x using a scale and by detecting its momentum p along the same axis. Any such experimental observation will necessarily be somewhat unsharp because no practical measurement can achieve infinite precision. I have tried to indicate this here with the little blur lines around the position and around the indicator of the apparatus measuring the momentum. Mathematically, our knowledge will be represented by real numbers x and p. We must also quantify the uncertainty of our knowledge about x and p in form of the measurement errors delta x and delta p. This does not imply that our measurements of x and p would be incorrect. What it means is that we cannot distinguish physical situations that differ by less than delta x in position and less than delta p in momentum. So far this story is uncontroversial and it is the same in physics before and after the discovery of quantum mechanics. Thank you, slightly younger self. The part of the framework we have filled in so far, namely that of observations, works the same in all physical theories. That has to be the case because the world we observe, whether right here or in distant galaxies, does not depend on any theories we humans come up with. We will continue to fill in the remaining parts of the whiteboard in the following episodes and in those parts we will find differences in how different physical theories 
represent physical knowledge and interpret mathematical solutions. In the next episode, we will specifically discuss how classical physics, as it was known before quantum mechanics, fits into this framework and what classical physics got wrong about the world. I want to emphasize some points you should take away from this video. In order to have a physical theory, we must couple the mathematical part of the theory to the physical world by postulating a a prescription about how to represent physical knowledge mathematically and b a prescription about how to interpret mathematical solutions physically. These prescriptions are not optional or negotiable. They are as vital a part of the theory as the mathematical equations. A mathematical object by itself, like the mathematical solution of an equation, has no inherent physical content. We need to give it physical content by postulating its physical interpretation, which cannot be derived from the mathematics. Don't miss this crucial distinction between mathematical objects and their physical interpretation, lest you will forever be confused about quantum mechanics. Mathematical objects are not physical objects. To wrap up, quantum mechanics is not an abstract mathematical setting for thought experiments or a philosophical essay about a fictional world. Quantum mechanics is a physical theory, and now you know exactly what that means. It is a complete set of rules that tells us how to quantitatively reason about the actual physical world that you are observing right now as we speak. If you have any questions about this video, please post them in the comments below. If you don't have any questions, please comment anyway to let the algorithms know that this topic is interesting to people. Also, please share this video so we can all work together to somewhat reduce the confusion surrounding quantum mechanics. See you next time!